Hello everyone, I'm Castamina. Recently I finished up a game on stream and I'm testing out a new series on the channel to wrap up the series and take an extended view on what I thought of the game. I will warn that there are minor spoilers, especially regarding the final boss. I will let you know when I'm about to talk about it. Recently I finished up Odalis The Dark Call. It's a 2D platformer that has an 8-bit graphics style and chiptune audio. There are 9 levels in total and each level has its own mechanics and items to find. You will need to be discovering a lot as there are a lot of places to look and secrets to find. The game has you take up the role of Haggis, a soldier who wandered after the war ended. He goes in search of his son after his village is burned to the ground. As you progress, you will fight different enemies and pick up soul orbs that you can trade in for either items, food or extra lives. The game has been likened to games like Ghosts and Goblins, Demon's Crest and Castlevania, and I can see where these comparisons come in. You might have already noticed that there is a secrets found bit under the area title. This helps you keep track of whether you have found everything. You will get branching options later for each stage, except the last stage of course, but each stage has quite a few things to keep track of. Of course at the end of each stage there is a boss fight as well. We'll talk boss fights later. So what did I think of the game? The game is solid without being fantastic few things to think of when you decide to play this game. For hard games, the boss fight makes the game. Aside from the final boss, which I will get to later, the bosses needed some time to work out how to beat. It's very Dark Souls-like when it comes to how the boss fights are. Also, just like Dark Souls, the bosses are very satisfying to kill. I thought the world map was a nice nod back to the Castlevania games of old. We're talking before Circle of the Moon and even before Symphony of the Night with showing you where you are. However, the biggest issue I found was, while it's fun to go discovering, there is no in-game map in the actual area that you are in. It's like the developers expected you to know exactly where everything is and know exactly where you are going. I played through this blind and it was very easy to miss things as I am more on the casual side in terms of gaming. There is also a lack of hints on extra exits or items. The secrets found is your only lead. It expects you to know exactly what you are doing and discover on your own. There are some who will appreciate this, but it's not for me. And you might say, Caster, why not Google all of this? Surely Google is everyone's best friend, you dummy. Well, here's the thing. I did. I looked through Google and guess what? There were not that many search results. There were a lot of videos more than anything and speed running tactics that than any actual help that came up on the results. Note too that because I'm streaming the game, I don't normally have a lot of time to look stuff up, so when I don't get an answer within the first two pages, it makes it harder for me to look kindly on the game. One thing I find with 2D platformers is that the controls have to be very responsive. This game is no exception. The controls are solid, and you can customize the controls on the launcher. I thought that the controls were fine default-wise, and I mainly ran with the default controls and not really changed them too much. However, some of the controls are a little too tight, and sometimes a single tap ends up being picked up as a double tap by the game. This gets very frustrating when I got deeper into the game. I will say, however, that this could be a controller issue or even a me issue where sometimes I can double tap when I only want it to single tap. I felt that scaling was not an answer to increased difficulty. What I mean is that as you purchased more and more goods from the shop, the price of the goods in terms of souls, which is your currency, goes up and up. And it's not just for that one shop, it actually goes across multiple shops. And it's rather annoying to find that you don't have enough to get that next life, which could actually guide you over. It's not just confined to one map. I will give you guys a spoiler now, I'm about to talk about the final boss, so please check below and I should have a timestamp for the next section. Final boss. While I did praise bosses earlier, the final boss is actually garbage. This was what forced me to quit the game. Yes, I know it's the final boss, it's supposed to be hard, blah 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 blah, but really it felt so poorly designed and it feels like it's meant to be for the super hardcore gamers. The game is hard enough during the game, but at least you can find healing items around you to keep you going, whether it's a bowl of soup or some meat, Soup restores one heart, meat restores all hearts. I don't mind a decent boss fight, but the final boss, it's a multi-phase fight firstly, and there's three phases at least. And the first two phases, 
the boss parries a lot of your attacks and the only way which you are going to hurt him is to counter attack which makes it rather tedious in the first spot and after i finished the second boss the third boss came up and i had already had low health at that point so there is no way to heal in between the different phases and by then it was just annoying so usually when you go through a boss fight or even in the final stage earlier on there were two extra bosses that i had to fight and it didn't it was okay because once i beat those bosses that was it they were dead for good and your progress normally saves within that level and um, even when you die and have to and have the game over screen you still kept your progress but not with this final boss so when you die you have to start all over again and that broke me Overall, the game is solid, but as someone who games casually, this game feels a little prohibitive for me. I really enjoyed the platforming and the other boss fights, but not the last one. I did feel a great sense of satisfaction when I beat the other bosses. And not only that, but in the final area, there is also a mini nod to Mega Man where you had to fight as the aforementioned two other bosses. It would have been nice to have something to help you with that final boss fight and not have to dodge everything and keep your health nice and high for that last section now to be fair because i only got up to the third phase i don't know if the third phase would have finished the game or not so there could be a fourth or even a fifth phase for all i know and i've got no idea at this point because i just about had enough overall we played for just under seven hours and i gave it a rating of 65 percent despite the fact that I ended up um, retiring the game. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little wrap-up of Adalus the Dark Call. If you enjoyed this, please by all means drop a like. Let me know in the comments about it. I do have a few more of these sorts of videos lined up in the future. And I will get to them as I make time to be able to do all these videos and upload them to YouTube. Um, all the videos of me playing Odalis will be in the description below. And... If you want to check out all the gameplay with my thoughts while I was in the game. I've also included links to my Twitch channel if you want to come and watch me live. And stream times are also listed in the description below. So if you enjoyed any of this stuff, please by all means follow me on Twitch. I have no issue whatsoever. Thanks very much for watching everyone. See you guys next time for the next wrap up or on the next stream.